So my name is C. Brown. I'm an extension field crop entomologist uh, for the University of Tennessee, and I'm in the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology. And today, I'm going to give you a little bit of information on uh, the new Thrive on Cotton technology that you may have seen in popular press, and it's been come out uh, in the media a few times. And so it's it's the newest technology that we have coming online for cotton uh, in the BT world, and I think it's a very valuable tool that our growers and uh, ag professionals uh, will definitely value and be able to use uh, moving forward. So something I, I wanna start also to talk about is that we have a, a new uh, UT uh, Institute of Agricultural Remind System that we set up here at the West Tennessee Research and Extension Center in Jackson. Although you don't have to be in Jackson to sign up for it. Um, what it is is basically it's a, it's a text based messaging system that allows uh, us specialists, myself, uh, uh, Dr. Larry Steckel, Dr. Tyson Raper, uh, any of us to basically get information to y'all that uh, quickly and comes in the form of a text uh, message. And so um, what this does is allows us ways to send you if something's coming up, especially when the entomology world, when I see something like moth flights or um, any kind of other situation that may be coming up, uh, whether we have control of plant bugs or thrips resistance, what I can do is I'll send it to the UT at UT Cotton uh, Remind text message thread. And so really it's free. Um, if you have children, you're probably familiar with this already. Uh, so all you have to do is send a text to 81010 and in the, the text message, just put at UT Cotton or at UT Soybean, UT Wheat or Corn, what it does, it signs you up for crop specific, just news alerts and things that, you know, uh, like I'll send out scout school information for my at UT soybeans, for the UT cotton when I sent out cotton scout school when it was, um, you know, where, location, time. So it's really a good way for us to get information to y'all as specialists. And it's something that comes in the form of a text message. So you can go back and find it. It's searchable. Um, you can see it in a text thread. And um, it's a really good way for us to be able to get information to y'all in the form of a text. So we're not going to send you a book or send you a whole lot of inform more information than you need. Um, this is something that really uh, has been, has had a lot of great feedback here in Tennessee. And um, so hopefully if you, this is something that interests you, please sign up and, uh, you know, we'll be happy to, happy to chat with you on it and uh, move forward. All right. So getting in the presentation. So uh, this year, in 2022 has been a very difficult year for cotton growers with thrips control. And so uh, where this product shines is gonna be on thrips. And so um, it's kind of a little background on Thrive On. Thrive On is a new BT gene that Bayer has developed and put into cotton. And so we found thrips control on really by accident. It's originally designed for tarnished plant bugs, but you know, after the going through our evaluations here at the academic level, we started seeing that Thrive On was taking no thrips damage. It was extremely, you know, thrips resistant. It seemed to be where we didn't, we didn't get a whole lot of thrips injury on this cotton. And so what come to find out that actually the BT gene that is in the Thrive On cotton actually has some activity on thrips. And I, as an entomologist, I don't use this term very often, but it is a silver bullet on thrips. I mean, it is something that we, I rarely wouldn't think I'd say this in my career, but as of what we've seen right now, it is a silver bullet on, on thrips that we see in the Mid-South. Uh, and we've looked at this technology for several years. I've, I've looked at it for five years. Some of my colleagues have looked at it for longer than that. And we see the same results over and over again, where we, we see just very, very good uh, performance against thrips damage and thrive on. And so you can see here on the right hand side, you know, this is this is going to be cotton with a normal seed treatment has not been sprayed for thrips. This is thrive on on the left hand side with a seed treatment that has that has nothing else done to it. No foliar applications, no nothing. And this is taken in the same field. And so just a little bit about this this field, you know, when we do our thrips counts in it, we were finding roughly over 300 thrips for, per five plants. And so of those, 250 of them were immature. So the adults have come in, they've made it, they've laid eggs, and this cotton is absolutely just getting completely uh, destroyed by these thrips. And the damage is very evident here, as you can see on these plants. And so 
Uh, whereas you, you know, you look at the towards the left hand side, the Thrive on Cotton looks good that those leaves almost are blemish free. And we see a lot of just yield preservation and good yield potential, as well as relative maturity preservation with the Thrive on. So looking at the thrips distribution, and so um, a lot of the data that I'm going to be presenting was generated by Dr. Scott Graham and Dr. Scott Stewart at the University of Tennessee. And so uh, I borrowed um, I borrowed a lot of their data. And so well, I will be presenting that today. Uh, hopefully, you know, I said I'm new to Tennessee and I haven't generated my own uh, Thrive On data as of yet. But these two are, you know, have done a lot of the groundbreaking work when it came to uh, Thrive On control and uh, or thrive on you know, the benefits. And they've done a very good job at, uh, at presenting this data. And so they were gracious enough to let me you know, borrow their data and present it so I can give you all basically the background and how, what you can expect out of thrive on in the future. And so you know, what we see here is just the breakdown of the thrifts, uh, species and thrive on versus non thrive on. Overwhelmingly, and it's what we see in cotton is tobacco thrifts. Where you have the BT genes here on the right, the, where it says BT, that's going to be thrive on. Where it says none, that's that's non-thrive on. And so this is over four tests at two locations. And this is going to be at Milan and Jackson. And so you know, overwhelmingly, seventy-six percent in both tests were tobacco thrips, and that's normally to be expected in the mid south. I mean, that's what we see in Tennessee. Uh, primarily, the thrips that that infest our cotton are going to be tobacco. Uh, you see soybean thrips occasionally. Uh, but they're very, very, very small, uh, small minority of what infests our cotton. And so realistically, I mean, these are going to be the biggest ones that we see are tobacco thrips. And that really doesn't change on Thrive On. But what does change is the amount of thrips and the number of thrips that we see on Thrive On. And so you've got two leaf stage cotton here on the left and 3.5 leaf stage cotton on the right. And so really, if you look at the bottom, it says trait. So this is going to be thrive on with a C treatment. Uh, this is going from left to right. This is thrive on with no C treatment, no thrive on with a C treatment. So just your regular cotton, and then no thrive on and no C treatment. And so where we see, you know, even at the two leaf stage and the three leaf stage, the insecticide C treatment or the IST is performing very well. I mean, it's keeping thrips numbers down. You know, we're only running roughly 20 thrips per five plants. Uh, so that's still, that's a, that's a low number of thrips. But where we don't have traits and where we don't have seed treatments, we have significantly higher numbers of thrips, which is to be expected. I mean, so we're going to see a lot of thrips. But what is, what's really the kind of the telling case here is where we have the trait only um, in both at the two leaf and the three leaf stage. You know, we, even without an IST, we still see a significant reduction in thrips. And so, uh, you know, when we add an insecticide seed treatment to Thrive On, it does pick up performance some, but at the same time, I mean, we don't have to have the insecticide seed treatment to get good performance out of Thrive On. So much so that we as entomologists across the Mid-South are no, we don't really even recommend a seed treatment on Thrive On cotton because we don't need it. I mean, the, the thrips that are there don't do enough damage to really warrant even an over-treatment. And so the insecticide seed treatment on Thrive On is not necessary. Um, and so, and that's something that we are, we're really starting to see and find out about Thrive On is these thrips really aren't, it's more of a repellency. It's not a direct mortality, but it more of a, they feed, they don't like what they taste and they fly on. And what that does is when they don't like where they are, they're not going to mate and lay eggs and you're not going to see the huge amounts of damage that you saw on that or that previous picture. And so where the thrips don't colonize the cotton, we don't see the damage. All right, so this is moving on to injury ratings. So kind of the same scales and uh, same treatments where we have trade only. I mean, you know, we're, this is typically when we rate thrips, it's on a one to five scale. One, zero to one uh, is almost a perfect plant. And so there's no damage. Five is dead. Where you need to make a foliar application is a three. And so where we have trade only, I mean, it's less than one. So that plant is almost, I mean, blemish free, kind of like what I showed you, pretty much perfect. Where you add an IST to it, it just gets a little bit better. In reality, cotton plants that are below one are absolutely, I mean, there's no reason to make an foliar over treatment and they're not going to see any yield loss. I mean, it's really a relative maturity loss. So the Thrive On is protecting our yield in that, and when it comes to damage as well. Okay, so looking at really kind of where, where the rubber meets the road with yield. 
And so this is what uh, what Dr. Graham and Stewart had saw is that, you know, where they use Thrive On, and this is pounds of seed cotton. So where they use Thrive On with an insecticide seed treatment versus where they use Thrive On with no seed treatment, um, we didn't see a significant difference. Where they used a seed treatment for non-Thrive On, this non-BT-IST, you know, we didn't really see a big difference in yield between these three treatments. Where we did see a difference in yield was the non-BT, no IST. So essentially where we didn't use a seed treatment and where we didn't have Thrive On, we lost about 100 pounds of, of lint per acre. And you're looking at, you know, potentially $1.50 cotton. I mean, that, that's, a lot of, that, that's a lot of yield that's left on the table. That's a lot of money that growers are leaving behind just from thrips. And so, um, you know, this is something that really will pay off in growers' pocketbooks. And it's something I think truly as the thrips component of this, this product is, uh, is very impressive and is, uh, is a great tool for integrated pest management in cotton. So your take home, so your Thrive On is gonna reduce thrips numbers. Um, it's gonna be repellency, not direct mortality. Repellency is the key here. And that comes to resistance questions I get. Um, being that it's repellent um, and more of a non-preference, non-feeding, I guess would be almost a better way to say it. We don't really see resistance because it's not outright killing. Um, and so I think this is gonna be, hopefully this trade will be here for the long haul and it works very well. Another good thing about it is it's only being put in cotton. It's not being put in soybeans, it's not put in corn, any of these other crops that use transgenic uh, compounds. It's not, it's not gonna be put in that. It's only gonna be utilized in cotton, which is good. So we're only, we're not exposing all of the thrips, the tobacco thrips populations to essentially uh, this compound in unnecessary applications in like corn and soybeans. Um, Overgrazers are not needed with this pro with with this new technology. I mean, this is something that we can say. My colleagues and I have looked at this for several years across the mid south, the southeast, the west, and Texas, uh, and we don't see the need. Out of all of those trials, none of us have ever needed to make an overspray on Thrive On. And the ones that have tried looking at making an overspray did not benefit in yield whatsoever. And so, oversprays are not going to be needed with this technology. Uh, insecticide seed treatments are a question mark. I mean, we are not recommending seed treatments as a Mid-South entomology group, which is I'm a part of. Um, however, uh, Bayer said that they, due to EPA stewardship protocols or not, they have to put some kind of seed treatment on the seed. So it will probably become, come with a seed treatment, although just know later on down the road, potentially, you do not need a seed treatment on this cotton for thrips. It performs well without it. All right, switching gears to plant bugs. So this is a, a picture of, this is Thrive On on the right-hand side and non-Thrive On on the left-hand side. And that shows the yield preservation that we get from plant bugs. And so this is where plant bug, this is where Thrive On was originally designed to do, was to help control plant bugs. And so you can see, I mean, there's, there's the, the maturity difference is pretty striking. I mean, this cotton has fruit on it. It's, it's, it's senescing, the bowls are opening, where this cotton is still green. And you know is really not want to shut down and try to in, in anticipation for harvest. Um, so this is some data. This is Tartar's plant bug hundred squares of blooms, and this the non BT is going to be a kind of a lighter orange, and the BT is dark orange. You know where we see dirty squares, dirty blooms, the BT or the Thrive On significantly reduces the number of injured squares and blooms, as well as just total plant bugs. And it's going to be something similar to what we saw with thrips. It's more of a deterrent. They, it's not outright mortality, especially on large immature plant bugs or adults. We may see some direct mortality on small nymphs. I mean, it's like first, second instar potentially, but what, we, what happens is plant bugs fly in, they start feeding, they don't like what they taste, and then they fly off. They don't, it, it slows colonization down uh, by plant bugs, which reduces overall populations and causes a reduction in uh, reduction in the number of plant bugs you see, which causes a yield preservation because we don't have as many plant bugs. And that also means that we typically don't spray as much. Um, and so looking at insecticide performance, this is, a, this is some data that I generated out of Louisiana. I uh, haven't had a chance to generate it here in Tennessee yet, but if you look anything with a T on it, um, is Thrive On. So we have orthene at three quarters of a pound on non-Thrive On cotton versus Thrive On. This black line is the threshold that we have, which is three plant bugs per drop. 
And you can see, you know, really where it shines is if you look at bifenthrin, you know, this 6.4 ounces with a T on it. We don't see a huge significant difference between the two Thrive On and non Thrive On, but we do see a reduction in plant bugs. And that's what Thrive On is going to bring to the table. And so if you go over here, really what tells the story is this non tree And so most of these insecticides perform relatively the same, whether they're on Thrive On cotton or non Thrive On cotton. But something we do see in our non treated, the non treated Thrive On is significantly lower than the non treated conventional. And so you're looking at, you know, less than four plant bugs per drop in the, in the Thrive On versus uh, upwards of eight. So, I mean, we had roughly, it was cut more than half. And so that's where we see a lot of the benefits of this technology is just the reduction in plant bug numbers. And with insecticides, I mean, it's, I've had guys ask me, you know, Kim, does it make some of our subpar insecticides look better? Uh, there's some potential with that. But at the same time, it's going to make your good insecticides just absolutely shine. Like your transforms are going to absolutely just look spectacular on Thrive On. Diamond is another one that's going to look really good on Thrive On as well. Uh, and so it's, it's not going to be something where you can dust off some of these older, let's say, a pyrethroid by itself, like this bifenthrin. It's still not working even on Thrive On. You're still above threshold. Pyrethroids by themselves are just are not good on plant bugs because of resistance. And that's in there still, even on Thrive On, I'm not going to recommend just using a pyrethroid by itself for plant bug control. Okay, so looking at uh, moving from squares and blooms to bowls, uh, we have some outer stains and so some warts and then lint damage. And so, you know, where we have the BT or the Thrive On, we see all a significant, or Dr. Scram, Graham and Stewart saw significant reductions in outer stains, warts, and lint damage. And so, you know, this kind of just shows, kind of more completes that picture that even in bowls, it's going to help stop and slow the damage of plant bugs, so much so to the point where it's significantly lower and thrive on versus non thrive on. And so, where you reduce your outer stains, your bowl warts, and your lint damage, you increase your yield. And so, you've got less plant bugs, which feed less, which cause less damage, which require less insecticides. And so, as a general rule, how what I've told people is that, you know, typically if you sprayed six times for plant bugs in the past on non Thrive On, you may spray four times on Thrive On. If you spray twice, you may get away with spraying once, or if you're lucky, potentially none. And so there is value and benefit here. It's just, it is definitely not, it is not the silver bullet on plant bugs that it is thrips. And this is something uh, that you know, we see is that plant bugs, especially adults, will feed on Thrive On. Um, they will, you will get, if you, you will have very large adult migrations uh, moving out of corn, out of non-crop bugs into Thrive On, and they can absolutely strip all the squares off of it. Uh, we saw it happen in Louisiana, it happened in Mississippi. And so if you have very large plant bug populations in the environment, they still need to be controlled. Thrive On is not going to be the answer to large migrating adult populations. So you still have to scout. And that's where this thresholds are the same bullet point comes in. As of right now, we are not lowering the threshold or increasing the threshold on Thrive On versus non Thrive On cotton. Um, you see that we think that it's just going to make thresholds more important. You're just going to have a little bit of wiggle room potentially on spray applications with thresholds. You can, if you can't get to a field uh, within, you know, the time frame you need to make an application, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be quite as Johnny on the spot with Thrive On as you do non-Thrive On cotton. It gives you a little bit of lag time that's built into it. However, because, you know, because of the technology and the non-feeding and the less numbers, you still need to make applications. Um, however, they are slower to build, especially if you have a normal plant bug migration year, they typically are going to be slower to build and thrive on cotton. However, they can and will build in thresholds. And there is some potential nymph mortality that we do see. However, it's going to be on the very small nymph. So your first and your second in stars, not going to be on your real big fourth, fifth, you know, especially adults. The bigger, the larger the nymphs get, the less mortality you're going to see with them. And so they're still going to be there. Um, potentially feeding, probing, doing some damage. So that's why it's still very important to scout thrive on, and it's not something you can just set it and kind of forget it. Um, 
that's what I've got. So uh, I'm based out of the West Tennessee Research and Education Center in Jackson. This is my cell phone number. So if you please feel free to call me if you have any questions or concerns uh, with cotton or field crops, anything moving forward. Uh, this is my email address. Feel free to uh, email me if you uh, if you have any concerns or if you have any questions about anything I've presented or just field crops in general in Tennessee or the Mid-South. And I will be uh, happy to help you in any way I can. Thank you.